We're back on Warriors.com here on Media Day and our third annual Tweetia Day. Send your questions there, hashtag Tweetia Day. I'm Tim Roy along with Warriors forward Richard Jefferson, and it's always fun to be back in the gym. Yes, it is. It's good to be here. Tell me a little bit about uh, your offseason. We were talking off camera, and you were mentioning about uh, the, the workouts that you did this offseason. Are your workouts different now than maybe the first four or five years of your NBA career? Yeah, I have to work out a lot more. Uh, when you're younger, your body just recovers. Your body naturally stays in shape. Uh, here, if you're not working out constantly at this age, uh, then your body starts to kind of go backwards. So, uh, you know, you're working out two, three times a day, uh, eating right, doing all the things to keep your body right. Tell me a little bit about the, your your view on the season now. The, this this team coming in, it's it's the deepest Warriors team I've been around for years. You know, how do you see this roster and look forward to the season? Well, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, even with all the expectations and the excitement around the team, uh, excitement doesn't win games. Expectation doesn't win games. Hard work. Uh, people staying together, being healthy, those are things that win games. And um, are we talented? Yes. Are there a lot of talented teams that, that don't accomplish their goals? Yes. But, you know, we want to be on the other side of that. You've played for a number of great teams. You've been in the NBA Finals. What's that little extra ingredient? Selflessness, understanding that um, what you did last year or what your expectations are of yourself uh, might be different for the team to succeed. So, you know, there might be some guys that, you know, be called upon to not start. There might be guys that are called upon uh, to not average 20 something points a game. The teams that are the most selfless are typically the best teams that give up of each other to, to, to get the best shot possible. Those are the type of things that the best teams kind of do. How's it feel to be back, by the way? It feels great to be back. Uh, you know, it was kind of a whirlwind. I'd never been traded in, in, in midseason before. Uh, so to get here, and it was the lockout, and there were just a lot of different things going on. So um, to be around the coaches and the players and to be in the city and just to see the excitement that everyone has, uh, it's a lot of fun. How's it feel to be back in the West? Oh, it feels great to be back in the West. <laughs> I've never been this far West. And just getting used to the travel schedule. And uh, there's a lot of familiar places. Like today, we were up at Stanford. Uh, and just going there and remembering all the games I used to have there with the Collins Twins and Casey Jacobs and Mark Mattson, uh, it, it was great. So just being on the West, there's a lot more memories for me. Now, during the summer, do you do you watch Summer League? Did you see the Warriors play in Summer League? Yeah, yeah, I saw the Warriors play. Uh, I saw a couple of teams play in Summer League. I was actually um, in uh, in Vegas uh, watching the games. What did you think of the, the Warriors uh, rookies? Harrison Barnes, Draymond Green, Festus Azili. I think I think we have a lot of talent, especially young talent. Young talent is something that um, is key to any team. If you have young guys, you look at the Spurs last year, they had Kawhi Leonard who really stepped up for them and played well late in the season and, and uh, throughout the playoffs. And, if you can get quality minutes and quality time, especially from a talented guy uh, like Harrison, who, who was our, I think, the eighth pick in the draft, that's something that will really kind of continue to build for the future. And individually, does that also present a challenge for you? Because now there's yourself, Brandon Rush, Harrison Barnes, who can all play the three spot and, and to kind of get ready, put your, your hard hat on and go to work? you got to get your hard hat on. And the best part about that is, if you're in the game, it's not somebody that's going to come in and get, get you for a blow. It's somebody that can come in and finish the game. If Harrison's not doing it, then I'm there. If I'm not doing it, B Rush is there. There's so many different guys that uh, it breeds competitiveness. When you're on the court, you know you need to do your job because there's somebody just as good, if not more talented, that's going to be ready to step up. Now, last year I noticed I would look down and I would see that you know, you're on the bench, you're talking to some of the young guys, you're pointing out different things. Mm -hmm. Uh, without getting into any state secrets here, what kind of things are you, are you talking to them about? Just just the consistency late in games. Um, we lost a lot of tough games at the end of, at, at, um, at the end, uh, and for us to take that next step, you have to be able to finish off games. You have to know that hey two-point game on the road we're gonna get a good shot every single time it can't be well I saw this you saw this coach called this no every single game you have to know down the stretch that you're gonna get the shots that you want and you're gonna limit your defensive mistakes and so those were the things that I was just trying to point out most of the time at the end of the game now when you were a young player was there a mentor for you yeah, I had quite a few. When I, the, my first two years on New Jersey, I was the youngest guy on the roster. And now, you know, the flip side of this, uh, I'm the oldest guy on this team. But I had Jason Kidd, I had Keith Van Horn, Lucius Harris, Aaron Williams. I had probably seven or eight guys that had 10 plus years in the league when I first came in. And even Kenyon Martin, 
uh, who was only in his second year, but he was a, a four-year guy in college. So he was, a, he was a guy that at 24, 25 was probably more mature than just a second-year player. A couple of those guys you mentioned, Lucius Harris, Aaron Williams, they hung around because they did pay attention to details. They did show up on time and do all the stuff they're supposed to do. Uh, you know, Lucius Harris probably doesn't get as much credit as he should for being a quality player. It's very tough to be a backup shooting guard for 10 plus years in this league. And even for Lucius, we were both coming off the bench my rookie year, and I would sit next to him every single game. And, you know, I'd go in there, get two fouls, he'd sit me down next to him, he'd joke with me. But I learned so much from him. One, about being a professional, being on time, being early, putting your work in every day, how to focus every single game and learn from, you know, the guys that are in the game playing, learning from them. A healthy Steph Curry, a healthy Andrew Bogut, what's that going to mean for this team? It means that we need to play well. It means that we need to play well. We can't all just walk around here patting each other on the back and smiling and thinking that, hey, we, you know, we got guys healthy. Being healthy just doesn't automatically solve your problems. The best teams in this league execute late in games. The best teams in this league have a lot of talent, which I, I believe we are on um, the, the, the more talented end uh, of some of these teams. But for us, it's just going to be about our execution and our focus and our maturing because we're still young and we don't have a lot of playoff experience on this team. So how we handle that, how we grow from that, it will dictate the type of season we'll have. Having Andrew Bogut playing behind you, how much does that help you defensively? It helps quite a bit, uh, but he needs to be somebody that's there um, to, to clean up mistakes. He can't be someone that you're depending on. That's not what we want. Andrew Bogut is a person there that, hey, if you do make a mistake, he's somebody there uh, that can help you. But if you depend on him, oh, I'll, you know, if you're just, you know, constantly, if, if Andrew Bogut's constantly in foul trouble or is getting four or five, excuse me, blocks a game, then there's something wrong, fundamentally wrong with your defense. Right. Now tell me, uh, as you look at the depth on this team right now, and I was talking to Coach, and, and you know, there, there's there's NBA quality depth. I, one you know, one through five in this yeah. roster right now, and, it, and it's got to help because you know, the, an 82 game season, there's going to be rolled ankles. Somebody's going to get the flu. Yeah. It's got to help over the course of 82 games. It, it will help, um, and that's that's something that we're counting on. I think with the injuries that they had last season, they wanted to bring in a few more veteran guys. Uh, they wanted to bring in uh, some durable guys. Um, you know, and even Andrew not having to. To, to beat Andrew down constantly because you have another post presence, because you have backup centers. Uh, the same with Steph, bringing in Jared Jack, so you're not you know, depending on Steph to play 40 minutes a game where his ankle and different body parts can get fatigued. To have those guys uh, that you know that you can count on is it, going to be good for us. A couple of questions from the fans. Again, it's our third annual Tweetia Day. You can send your questions, hashtag Tweetia Day. And from Chris, he wants to know who on the team would win in a game of horse? Ooh, the game of horse, probably either Steph or Clay. Uh, those guys are probably the two best shooters on the roster. But you never know. With horse, with, with horse it starts getting the trick shots, and I think it could open up to a few other guys. Okay. What team do you think, this is from Kevin Turner, what team will be the most challenging team uh, to beat this year? All of them. All of them. All yeah. of them. Every single one of them. Uh, you have Oklahoma City. You have uh, you have the Lakers that are that are, that are improved. You are um, you you look at uh, the Spurs, Spurs, which are a con consistent team. Uh, I believe Houston um, ha has added some very nice pieces to their roster. Clippers, da Clippers, yeah. obviously. Dallas, obviously. Uh, people have to understand if you want to make it to the playoffs, you're going to have to knock someone else out. Memphis is a quality, quality team, and it, and they're starting to breed consistency in their performance in the sense that where they're expected to make the playoffs every single year because of the talent that they have. Can this team get to the playoffs? You know, I, I believe we're going to do our best, um, and you know, we, we have the talent. It's just a matter of it all coming together. As long as we improve on our play from last year and continue to improve and continue to grow, we have a young enough team that that, that maturing process can, can lead to those type of things. All right. Final question for you. Your offseason, anything, anything fun, anything different in the offseason? Nothing different, just worked <laughs> extremely hard on, on, on trying to improve my game and working on some things I hadn't been able to do in a while. And I, I lied, I got one more for you. Uh, coming into this camp, and we talked about the fact that you know, you're now the, the, the older guy on the team and then the mentor, but do you, is there a different sense on media day for you now as far as looking forward to the season? Yeah, and this is my 12th media day, and I can't believe it. And, and you know, speaking of Lucius Harris again, when 
he sits down, he's like, oh, he was in his 10th year when I first got in. Right. And he was like, man, it goes by fast, it goes by fast. And you're like, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, you're in your fifth year, and like, man, I can't believe it went to my fifth year. You're in your 10th year, I can't believe I'm in my 10th year, double digits, totally wild. And then I'm in my 12th year. Wow. Like, my five-year plan, which <laughs> everyone should have, doesn't really include basketball, which is which for the first time in a long time is kind of scary. Wow. Well, that's great. You know, have, be, lasting 12 years in this league, that's quite an accomplishment. It's a blessing. It yeah, is. Yes, yes. All right. Warriors forward Richard Jefferson with me. I, Tim Roy, and our coverage of Media Day continues here on Warriors.com.